a new jumpstart came out. Yes, there's another set of jumpstarts that's going on currently. Uh, Malcolm Distortion was the first one. Came out in the 45th issue, which of this recording would have been uh, the last Monday. And then uh, the other jumpstart is something number one. What was it again? I forget the name. Uh, the other jump start that came out, or is, I guess, yeah, we'll, 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 it'll be out by the time this episode's out, but we'll definitely discuss it on the next episode, will be, uh, Tomohiro Hasegawa's, uh, Spring Weapon Number One. Yes, and that will have been, that will have come out in this week's issue by the time this episode is out. So that, that's neat. I like that. I, I, I always like new jump starts. Mm-hmm. But, um, I guess just real briefly, what, what, what did you think about, uh, what did you think about Amalgam? It's a very promising series so far. I really like the art style. It, I mean, it feels very familiar in a way I can't quite place, but also a little retro in a way, too. It actually kind of feels like something, a little bit of a throwback to maybe something I would have read in the 90s. It does have that kind of vibe to me in terms of the tone and, you know, the how it plays out. I think what I like about it uh, is that it kind of does a really good job of establishing its characters, but it also doesn't like waste, a, and it also doesn't really waste a lot of time in terms of getting to where it needs to. No, it gets to the point real fast. Yeah, so f- for one thing, like, I also like the mystery di- direction it kind of starts out as, because it starts off with, you know, this main character, he has girl problems, right? Like, he he oh can't confess to his childhood friend crush, and so there's this misunderstanding. But he clears up the misunderstanding and then they agree to go on a date. And it's like, oh, interesting. Their feelings are clear, and they're actually going to date. Let's see what happens. And then... Uh, you know, afterwards he gets into an accident trying to save this little boy, and then you're like, oh, is this gonna be like Yu Yu Hakusho? He's gonna be, like, turned into some ghost demon thing, and, you know, he has to come back, try and find a way to come back to life or whatever, and then it doesn't turn out to be that, because then we see him in this weird scientist, mad scientist facility thing, and then he's being turned into some kind of monster creature. And there's this intrigue with this classmate who's like this spy who's working for a different organization who claims to be be a fighter for justice or whatever, stopping whatever this evil organization is doing. And then he transforms into this really horrific looking monster that looks really impressive. But then he breaks out of it just because, you know, the simple desire that like he promised to go meet up with his girlfriend. And so there's it hits a lot of beats very quickly, quickly, but in a way that's easy to understand, easy you know to connect with and get behind. Like I like this kid, I like all the characters really, and I and I do want to. And the chapter ends in a way, you know, it ends with the hook with the samurai guy, you know, uh, says he has to kill the main character because it's for the sake of the greater justice, or you know peace and whatever so it's like interesting hook at the end of the first chapter there too so it just does a lot of elements really well that gets me interested in the in the world and story and like makes me want to see what happens next uh so there's a lot of good elements in the chapter that i just really enjoy and it's not like the story itself is necessarily original there's pun you know there's a bunch of stories about about uh, characters being transformed to monsters or whatever but at the same time you know it it executes you know from these familiar tropes and concepts really well and so i re- i really much appreciate that yeah so i i think i liked it enough but the like crazy very sadistic tone of the series so far <laughs> and how how creepy it can get it feels more like if if Jump were to have their own take on Tokyo Ghoul, almost like it if it, it felt very similar to me. Eh, I don't know. You don't I think mean, so? if, if the series becomes about people who are like monsters and being discriminated against and have to deal with this internal dual conflict, like maybe like Tokyo Ghoul is really a kind of a take on like vampire stories or whatever. I mean, it's a, it's like this hybrid of zombie vampire stories and, like, 
this has all these, you know, allegories to like discrimination, racial or LGBT or whatever. And so Amalgam of Distortion just so far doesn't really seem to have any of that. Like, it just seems like a fun pulp action premise, so... Yeah, I, I, again, I just meant specifically in tone, I felt like, was similar. But I'm sure the story will be different. Yeah, um, I mean... I'm sure it'll, it'll probably tackle different, uh... It'll probably tackle different themes, I'm sure. Tonally, it doesn't seem that dark to me. Like, the first one of Tokyo Ghoul is, like, Kaneki is... I don't, I don't know, man. I thought it was pretty... I, I thought it was pretty dark for a jump manga, There, are, I mean, there are dark ideas, but the tone isn't dark to me. Because compared to Tokyo Ghoul, we have the first volume of that. Kaneki is emo. He's, like, moody and moping around. Oh, I'm a ghoul. Now my life sucks. Why is this happening to me? Herbert, Herbert. But, like, <laughs> it's in this... In the first chapter of this, you know, the main character, like, ha- regains, like, his self-confidence. It's like, he, he breaks out of, like, his transformation out of his own volition. Like, he's optimistic about his future, you know? He's not, like, letting this whatever happened to him get him down, at least not yet so far. So it's not really on the same lines to me. I mean, it, for- it feels more like kind of a, a normal battle shown in tone to me. So I I, th- I think that... I don't see it, like, really going down the, a more darker, more contemplative lines like Tokyo Ghoul. But, you know, there are some good horror ideas in the series, so it's actually a really cool series to debut in October, uh, you know, during the month of Halloween and whatever, so I really like that. Like, it's a lot of very horrifying artwork and imagery. Like, it, it definitely has some very creepy stuff and some good horror stuff that's going on. I mean, I... I like just pretty much everything about what it uh, sets out to do. I guess the one thing that, like, I'm like, eh, maybe that's overboard is, like, the scientist woman who's literally eating guts, like, guts from people, apparently. So it's like... Yeah, that that really grossed me out. <laughs> that's that's kind of exploitative, kind of trashy thing. And, and she, like, she literally gets sexually aroused from... Um, I forget what it was in particular, but like it just had a lot of like really weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she gets aroused by bloodshed and like people getting mutilated, whatever. Like I, I like my crazies, but like that's a little too trashy for my taste. You know, those kind of villains are a little too much for me these days. You know, I, I, I'm not not too big a fan of them. I prefer a little more subtle villains. I was kind of surprised about how explicit that was, honestly, because it, it's one of those moments where I was like, this this is a magazine for, like, kids, right? Kids read this. <laughs> well, remember Nero, Colton, that was only a decade ago. And Death Note. Yeah, Death Note, didn't, Death Note didn't go as far as Nero. No, but the Death Note was still a, still a pretty big, um, uh, unorthodox title for Jump at the time, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm talking, I'm, but in terms of content, in terms of, like, the dark stuff, I think Nero kind of has that beat in terms of, like, disturbing concepts and ideas. It it does, but I'm, I'm saying I would still put it in that category of, I would never expect to read this in Jump. Mm-hmm, yeah. I mean, that's fair. That's why a lot of people argue that Death Note is really a Sanin series. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um... Okay, I, I I liked Amalgam enough. I I liked it a lot, but I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. I th- I th- like you said. I thought it was executed well. Um, yeah, and I w- I would read more of it. Mm-hmm. Why not? I'm really interested in it. I think it has a lot of potential. I don't know if we'll see it after the Jumpstart Mon in the English Jump, at least for a while. I mean, it depends. Red Sprite didn't have a great debut, so I'm a little worried that might get out, but. If if it does, I mean, at least this would be a good substitute. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I know there. Are, I've, I've talked to a few people who are like, "Yeah, Red Sprite kind of sucks," and I'm like, "I mean, it's not like the most amazing thing ever, but I think I still think it has a lot of potential, and I really want to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's definitely not a strong contender out of the gate, like the Promise Neverland was. I think, but. I think it's been picking up with every chapter, though. Like, I think it's, like, really... It's, it keeps getting better and better with every chapter, so I really like the way I it's agree. been developing. And I do think, like, there's some really cool art and action sequences in it. And 
Uh, yeah. I just, so it's kind of, it would be kind of a shame to me if it had sent prematurely, but at least the way the story is designed, it could probably do so, tell a short story without, you know, feeling too rushed. Like, it, I think Gakyohote managed to end up that way and that it managed to tell, like, a good short story, even though it's clearly ended way ahead of when it was supposed to. So, yeah. You know, it could end up like that, and that would be at least okay. Yeah, you could definitely tell. You could definitely tell Gakuhote like resolved a lot of its big plot threads like a little faster than you would have expected them to. Yeah, but if Red Sprite isn't long for this world, I hope Amalgam is what replaces it in our lineup. 